Good morning and welcome to the last and final session of Chapter 5, Market Equilibrium. In this session, we are going to see some of the most important concepts like price ceiling, price floor and the shift in demand curve altogether. This session is going to be very interesting. Why? Because we are going to learn certain new terms which will have a deep impact on the day-to-day -day economics. So going forward, shift in demand. What happens when there is a shift in the demand curve altogether? How does a shift in demand actually happen? If you look into the graph, on the x-axis we have the quantity and on the y-axis we have the price factor. So on the x we have quantity, on the y we have the price factor. Moment an increase in price, what will happen here is that there will be a decrease in demand. In the first case, we need to understand first the law of demand. The law of demand says that increase in price will lead to decrease in demand and vice versa. So first, if you start seeing when the price gets lowered in the market, the demand goes up because people want to buy more. So automatically a reduction in price will lead to increase in demand. An increase in price will lead reduction of demand. That's what is being depicted in the form of graph here. If you see here, when the price starts coming down or when it is maintained at the same level, at a lower price altogether, there is a shift in demand. The demand curve increases. Initially, it is located at the position D0. It moves on to the next position D1, which means there is an increase. It moves rightward. Why does that happen? Because there is a reduction in price. Now, if there is an increase in price, if you look at the graph, they might look similar. But the concept here that we need to drive is the factor of price and quantity again. You can see the arrow marks that indicate the movement of the graph. In the second graph, you will see that as the price increases, the demand graph or the demand curve comes back. It constricts back leftwards. That means there is an increase in price, the demand comes down. So initially, the demand was at D0. Now it becomes D2 here. So this is what we mean to say the shift in demand altogether. So again, coming back to the point, increase in price will reduce the demand. Decrease in price will increase the demand factor altogether. Moving forward, price ceiling. This is a very new concept and very interesting one that we need to learn from the economic standpoint. What is this price ceiling all about? It is the government imposed upper limit or the upper price maximum value for any product or service. Why does the government actually come in for a price ceiling or the pricing methodology altogether? Now in a country like India, we need to understand we have different sections of society. When I say different sections, that means different economic sections, different kinds of people earning different levels of income. So not everybody will be earning the same kind of salary, not everybody will have the same kind of benefits. So we have skilled, we have semi-skilled, we have unskilled laborers who are working in our country. So not for every one of them or what happens here is that they might not be able to afford a particular product if it starts going beyond a particular level of price. So it's very important that the government comes in and starts setting up a methodology. So here let's try to understand this example with the housing sector itself. In the real estate sector, if you would have seen that, in the past few years, the price of the real estate has been going skyrocketing. Now, if you take into the capital cities of India, the metro cities, you would see that the affordability in buying a house is almost becoming impossible for a common man. 
the reason is that private players coming into the market and they have risen the price of the housing sector that is the flats or the apartments or the houses to such a great extent that it is possible only for the upper class altogether like this you can see the example in every single sector be it in healthcare or be it in the sector of processed foods or in certain amenities in all these sectors what happens is that the pricing level starts going up because of the introduction of private players so here it becomes a difficulty for the common man for the common people to go ahead and realize their dreams so that is the reason government comes into picture the government says that for every product or every service that is available in our country i will set a maximum price i will set the ceiling beyond which you cannot sell that product in the market why does this thing happen because government wants every single citizen of our country to enjoy the service to get the benefit of each and every product or service that has been offered in our country so it becomes very important that the government starts taking care of all the citizens and they try to ensure that everybody is covered with that beneficial factor altogether so that is why the ceiling comes into picture now if you go to a ration shop for example there is an mrp maximum retail price so i would like to reiterate that point mrp maximum retail price what is the importance of this mrp that is the maximum price at which the consumer will be given the product that means a consumer will be able to buy the product at that fixed price this price is fixed by the government the government does not allow flotation of prices which means to say that every day it will not keep changing the government fixes a maximum price and says that yes we will be giving you rice at 20 rupees per kg sugar at 25 rupees per kg wheat at 15 rupees per kg so that we are fixing the maximum price now based on the price it is up to the consumer to go and how much ever he wants to buy his affordability will come in that range so the ideology of maximum ceiling the ceiling price concept itself is to ensure that people are getting a justified price at the end of the day we are not able to see that it's only for the upper class or for the chosen section of the society it is for everybody it's for every citizens of this country where that maximum ceiling price is being inducted so that everybody gets the benefit of the product or the service that is being done in our country moving forward the price ceiling graph now how does the price ceiling graph come into picture if you look into the graph we are taking price on the y axis quantity on the x axis now we have two curves here the first line that goes down and that is mentioned as d is known as the demand curve now the ss stands for supply curve so you have a demand graph curve and you have a supply curve here now both of them will meet at a common point that will be the equilibrium point that we need to know but how is this point coming up all together now if you see that there are two kinds of prices here there is a price factor which is called pc the price ceiling which is going to be set and then there is a price that is already available in the market now the concept here is very very clear now if the existing price is way above high than the government decided the government would try to come down and fix a ceiling all together the government would see that let's try to match the supply and demand so that we come to the equilibrium and this would be the point so for this much amount of quantity this will be the price that will be available in the market why because in our country you will see that there are many at times when the price is exorbitantly highly quoted so in that situation in that scenario the government tries to match the supply and demand make the market come back to the equilibrium position then the government will be able to understand what is the price ceiling that we need to keep now if the government fix the price here at this level altogether the government knows that beyond a particular point they 
cannot extend the price. So the government comes in and says to the market, to the common man that the price that is fixed for a particular product is X rupees. Beyond that X rupees, you will not be able to sell the product in the market. So that is the importance of the price ceiling graph. So going again onto this factor, it's a very, very simple graph. You take the price on the Y axis, quantity on the X axis, draw two lines. One will be the demand, the other one will be the supply. Both of them will meet at a common point. That will be the equilibrium factor. We have two prices, the price ceiling and the price that would be adjusted upon. Then we have the quantities at both the end. The place at which the supply and demand curve meet is called our equilibrium point and that is the point where the market will be adjusted for the maximum price factor altogether. So that is what we call as the price ceiling. Moving forward, price floor. Now the opposite of ceiling is floor. Now why is this concept also important in economics? So for anything, if there is an upper range, there should be a lower range also. So we are now going to talk about upper and lower limits. The pricing scenario in economics is a very, very interesting concept. Nobody just goes with one single fixed price. Now you cannot say the price of rice is 20 rupees per kg fixed. That's it. That is the end of the value. No, the price of any product in our country will have a range. So when I'm going to say the price of rice, I will say that the price of rice is available anywhere between 20 to 30 rupees. So what I'm trying to do here is that I am trying to put in a range altogether. So there are varieties of rice that are available starting from 20 rupees till 30 rupees. So what am I trying to do here? I'm trying to fix a lower limit and an upper limit. So this is something a little bit of statistics that we need to understand the upper limit and the lower limit factor. So what exactly is the government approved lower limit called as? That is called as the price floor. So price floor means the lower limit, the lowest value that has been prescribed by the government beyond which you cannot sell it again. So suppose the lowest price that is set by the government is 20 rupees. You cannot sell below it. Now you cannot go down and sell that. I will sell the rice at 18 rupees. That is not possible. The government decides the lower price and says that beyond which you cannot sell it. Now what is the significance and importance of this? Sir, we understand in ceiling because everybody should get benefited. Now, what is the importance of bringing price floor? The price floor is for the farmers, is for the producers of our nation. Because if you see in our country from an economic standpoint, it is the farmers who always stand back. They don't get any benefits at all. So for the farmers or the manufacturers, there should be a minimum selling price that has to be fixed by the government so that the farmers don't end up in loss. So it is very, very important for all of us to understand this factor when a price floor is being set that price floor is set for those farmers and for the manufacturers who struggle for our nation, who struggle to produce the goods, who struggle to produce those rice, wheat for us and they should also get some benefit. So the government keeps them in the mind and they said that beyond this price, don't go low so that the farmers don't get into the loss procedure altogether. So that is why it is very, very important that we set a price floor altogether. Beyond this price, you will not be able to sell so that the farmer do not go in loss. So price floor is equally important like price ceiling. Price ceiling means upper limit. Price floor means lower limit. These are the two important concepts that you need to keep in this chapter. You might definitely get a question in one markers or two markers asking what is the difference between price ceiling and price floor. Now going forward, the price floor gap. This is the price floor graph altogether that is very, very important for us. Now, again, in this, we are going to take the price factor on the Y axis and the quantity on the X axis, the same kind of graph. So on the Y axis, you have the price on the X axis, you have the quantity. Now, what is that we are going to do? We are going to see two factors here. 
Now for the manufacturer standpoint, the producers or the farmers, they would have produced a particular good at a particular cost. Now let's say the production cost of rice is 15 rupees per kg. Now for the farmer to get benefited, at least there should be 2 or 3 rupees beneficial factor. So the farmer should at least get 18 rupees per kg in order to get some profit. So now the government will try to seek a price here. The government will try to say that we will fix a particular price and then we will exceed it to a floor so that whenever you start seeing here the lower price that is point where it matches all together. So you see the supply curve and the demand curve meeting at a common point. This is that common point and that will be fixed as the lower limit altogether. Why that is fixed as the lower limit altogether? Because that is the price at which minimum profit will go to the farmer. So at any given point of time when the government is fixing the floor price, they keep in mind this factor very very clearly, very very thoughtfully saying that the farmer should not get into any kind of loss. So there will be a minimum profit that the government would have decided for the farmer. So at least he should get 2 or 3 rupees benefit for the amount of produce that he brings it to the market going forward. The conclusion for this chapter. What did we learn out of this chapter? The first thing that we learned about understanding of perfect competitive market. Now this was a equilibrium status. So this is a perfect competitive market where we have the equal number of buyers and sellers coming in and this is a market where we need to understand that there are n number of buyers there are n number of sellers so the market is pretty much fixed you don't have to worry at all for every product there is a seller and for every product there is a buyer the next one equilibrium price and quantity is determined at the point of intersection if you have carefully seen through the graphs in the session, you would see that the supply curve and the demand curve will meet at a particular junction. So this is where we were talking about. So this point is what we are talking about here. The intersection is the equilibrium price. So this is very, very important for all of us. The intersection of demand and supply is known as the equilibrium price. Next one, supply shift and demand shift is being explained. Yes, in the previous session, we saw that how did the supply shift and the demand shift had an implication altogether. So when the supply increases rightwards, the demand increases rightwards, the reverse function also supply moving to right, demand coming to left and vice versa. Why does this happen? Because of the movement of price altogether. So that is also a very, very important concept that we learned in this chapter. Next, we also spoke about free entry and free exit of the companies. This is highly important. Why? Because we have already discussed in the previous session. This is one kind of market where you can enter the market at your will and wish and exit the market at your will and wish. So perfect market is exactly perfect enough for any entrepreneur to just walk in and walk out. He doesn't have to think about the formalities, the legalities, how it is going to happen, when it is going to happen. He is not worried about it. He just wants to make an entry yes the market is ready to welcome him he wants to make an exit the market is happy to say goodbye to him so the free entry and free exit of the companies is highly regarded in a perfect market competitive session next we are going to talk about the concept of price ceiling and price flow which we saw this government intervenes into the market because the government thinks at a particular point at a particular junction i need to come and protect the citizens as well as the producers so for the citizens we fix in a particular price for the farmers for the producers also we set a minimum price so at any given point of time all the people in the country are benefited by the product or service that is being produced in our country. So that is why the concept of price ceiling and price floor is very, very important for us from this chapter. I hope and believe that this chapter was very interesting and something that has made you educative enough in the line of economics. 
Thank you for joining me today on this wonderful session. And this session is supposed to be one of the most important chapters in terms of your syllabus in second PUC economics. Until then, I would wish and I would say a thank you and goodbye to all of you. Stay tuned, stay blessed and stay educative forever. Thank you once again.